Before this video starts, I just wanted to say hi, my name's Aiden and welcome to my drone channel. I got a drone in early of last year and I've had so much fun with it last year and I wanted to finally do YouTube videos like this. In the coming months, I will do in-depth flight tutorials and tons of cool stuff like that. But until the summer months come, I'll do some awesome videos like recommending certain products for drones and all that kind of stuff. Hope you enjoy the video. What's up guys, it's Aiden. Welcome to my first video on my new channel. You guys probably know me or some of you may know me from my YouTube channel Aiden Gaming Universe where I do gaming videos. But on this channel, we're going to be talking in depth and flying drones. So hope you guys subscribe because that would be awesome and I'll be doing a lot of cool videos over the summer months. And yeah, but until the summer months come up and we really start flying drones a lot more, I'm just gonna be doing a lot of cool videos like this. So today's video, we are going to be doing an in-depth walk around of the DJI Fly app for the Mavic Mini, the Mavic Air, and the Mavic Mini 2, or the DJI Mini 2, as they changed it to. So first we're gonna be checking out is the profile button. So if you come in here, you can obviously see my little profile that I have here and I have 38.9 hours of flying, 263 kilometers distance and 597 flights. Yes, I flew it a lot last year when I first got my drone. So yeah, what we're gonna be clicking here first is you can see the more button. So here we have records of every single flight you've had with with your drone and this you can select all aircraft or you can um select a certain aircraft i only have one uh drone right now which is the mavic mini and we'll, that's what we'll be doing a lot of my videos on and yeah so we can just hop out of this right now i'm not gonna actually click on the actual flight record because that would show a bit of my location and i wouldn't really like that it has like a whole list of every warning you've got and all that really crucial information if you ever get in a crash. Next, we're gonna be going to device management since I have no nothing connected right now. It says no device found. So we're just gonna go out of that. In the corner, we have like a little customer service thing. If you ever need help, like to contact DJI. Next, if you click DJI forum and it loads, you see we are on the DJI forum website. So if you have any questions or anything, you can put it there and you'll get a response in like less than five minutes. Personally, when I've asked questions on there, it's been less than five minutes, which is awesome. Next, we're not gonna click on that, but that's just the DJI store where you can shop for products such as accessories like cases, batteries, all that type of stuff, or you can even buy a new drone. Here we have find my drone for if you lose your drone, it will show you where it is and you can even click it um, start flashing and beeping and it will make your drone start beeping so you can locate it in a certain area. So let's just go out of this and click settings. So here we have a bunch of information. This is not going to impact the flight. This is just for like your DJI account. So here we have check for firmware updates, check for fly safe updates. The drone isn't connected, but I know that all my stuff is here. Right here we have firmware auto download. So when this option is enabled, firmware updates will be downloaded automatically over Wi-Fi. So I just had that off right now. Next, we're going to click sync flight data. So this basically, if you have multiple devices that have the DJI Fly app installed, you can automatically, if I go out to here, you can see how all this information is here. If you uninstall the DJI Fly app and come back, it's going to say zero hours. But if you have the auto sync flight records on, then it will bring all the, because every time you land the device, your mobile device that you're flying it with will send that to DJI servers. So all your devices see all the same information. Camera view. So we can have it. So when you plug in your drone and you're in the app, it'll auto enter the camera view. So you can see what your drone's seeing. Flight tips, when this function is enabled, DJI Fly will show you some flight tips during firmware updates and all that type of stuff. Cache is basically just a little thing for, it's not really much to explain in that type of stuff. But then we have privacy. So this is just a bunch of stuff like local data mode and this is just um, device information so they can just make their products better. Language, so system default. And unlocked geo zone is if you're going to a certain area where it is locked down in like an authorization zone 
or any or an enhanced warning zone, you need to get an unlocking license. So you need to use go on a Wi-Fi network before you go or use your cellular data to request flight access for a certain amount of time. So we're going to hop out of this and we are going to go to uh, so I'm just going to quickly explain. So our, uh, Sky Pixel is just a website that DJI has. It's basically like a drone social media. So you can post videos and photos of different cool things that you capture with your drone album is just uh, like videos that you captured with your uh, drone and also it uh, changes so you can also see the photos that are actually on your device. So up here in Academy, this is just stuff like, uh, let's just wait for it to open. So it has function tutorials, tips, flight safety, and user manual. So you can see all this information here. So we're just gonna hop out of this. And next we are going to go to connect aircraft. So we're here. So obviously if your device was plugged in, it would automatically go right into the camera view. But since I have no drone connected right now, I'm just going to click camera view. And now we are in here. So obviously it's not connected to my remote controller. So that's not a big deal. So first up here, you can see RC not connected to mobile device. If we click on that, this is when your device is plugged in. This is your pre-flight checklist. So this is where you'll see all your warnings and all that kind of stuff. All this stuff under here, we're going to look into in a little bit. But right now, if you just see this top at the pre-flight check and it says normal, you should be okay to fly. The left, you can see this little button here. And when you hold that, obviously nothing's going to happen because I have no drone connected. That will lift your drone off the ground 1.5 meters and just hover it there. So it's like a little takeoff thing. And then down here in the corner, you have your maps. And you can also optionally, I think I have that sensor right now, I'm guessing. But I can optionally also have this little thing, which actually came over from the DJI Go 4 app, which uh, this little feature right here was actually just came out a couple days ago in an update. And then down at the bottom here, we have or our height and distance. And then above that, it's the meters per second, or you can also change it to feet, miles, kilometers, all that kind of stuff. So we can have the meters per second that we're going upwards and the meters per second that we're going forwards or backwards and also up and down for height. And then over here, we have our manual and automatic controls for shutter speed, ISO, EV, and all that type of stuff. So you guys who uh, want to get professional shots will probably want to use manual. Uh, so now we're going to be focusing on what's most important, which is these dots in the corner, which opens up all the crucial stuff to maintain a safe flight and have it personalized for you. So up here we have flight protection. So max altitude, uh, all this when you're not really connected to the drone, it's kind of just um, like all set for 15 meters and no limit, like that kind of stuff. But when you're connected, it will always be what you have it. So if you're on different devices, the drone has that data already on board. So we have our max altitude. So I don't know why it's set to 15 meters right now. But max altitude, max distance, it's no limit. But that doesn't mean your drone can obviously go no limit. Like, you're going to lose connection at one point. So we have our auto RTH altitude. RTH stands for return to home. So if you're a certain area um, out, if you click the return to home button on your device or click the return to home button on the controller, the aircraft will rise to the RTH altitude, as you can see here. So I recommend putting that higher than any of the buildings that are near to you or any structures so then it doesn't hit it when it's coming home so like i usually have mine at 30 when i'm just fine flying in my local area but some areas you might also want to have it higher so next we have update home point so while you're flying the drone if you want to click update home point and like let's say you move your landing pad or something to a different area uh, you can select where you want your new home point to be, and when the RTH button is pressed, it will fly home to the new location that you selected. Down here we have our sensors. So INU stands for Inertial Measurement Unit. So you're going to want to, uh, if there's anything weird, like your drone is not hovering in place that well and it's kind of drifting and stuff, you may want to calibrate your IMU, which I'll show you how to do that in another video. Compass is just to set your compass. It's super simple. You just rotate the drone 
in two different axes until it uh, gives you a little notification that everything's okay. Next, we're going to move down to battery. So if you click battery info, obviously there's nothing here right now. But up here, we have our battery cell status. So if you're flying, you want it to be at least above three volts for a safe flight. If it goes below that, you want to shut off your aircraft immediately. Over here, we have our battery voltage. So uh, if it goes below that um, and it gets like it gives you a little red indicator, you want to uh, land your aircraft immediately in the nearest safe area. Or if you can get it home, that'd be preferred. Uh, so battery temperature. So you can see what the, your battery temperature is. So you don't really want it going over a certain uh, temperature and you also don't want it to get too low because an optimal temperature I'd say is around 20 degrees but you don't want it to go uh, too high obviously you'll get a notification saying that the drone is too hot and you shouldn't be flying too much hotter or too much um, colder than what's uh, what the maximum temperatures and everything are for your specific drone that uses the fly app then we have our battery serial number number of times charged and the production date so that's not too much, uh, too hard to understand. Then we have our unlocked geo zone. So obviously my drone isn't connected, so it's not going to show anything. But if you were to unlock something, it would show it there. And then we have our advanced safety settings. So if the sig, this is a super super important thing here. So if the signal is lost, um, what do you want uh, the drone to do? And this is also known as a, as a fail safe. So do you want it to hover there? Do you want it to descend or return to home? I have it set when I'm flying to return to home because I, if I'm like super far away, I don't want it to just hover there forever. I would really, really want it to come home safely. And that's what I usually have it at because if I lost connection, it will just come uh, home and everything will be okay. So emergency propeller stop. Here is so if there's ever an issue while you're flying and you need to get out of the air immediately, you want to have it on emergency only and you push the both sticks together or out and it will emergency shut off both propellers. So or all the propellers. So that will just like make the drone free fall and hopefully to restart the aircraft before it falls to the ground. And we have payload payload mode. So this is using, this is if you have accessories like an anti-collision light on if you're flying at night or propeller guards and you're going to want to have that on. So that's super important. So that just changes how the drone acts and you should only have payload mode on if you're, um, if there's not too much wind. Next, we're going to go to control. So here are the different flight modes. So you have sports so that drastically increases the speed of the aircraft and it can go very, very fast. And I like to use sport mode a lot when I'm flying around. But next one is position. So that's just the normal flight mode and it just hovers in one spot uh, really, really well. But I don't know why it's called position because pretty much or all three flight settings keep the drone in one spot. So I think that's just uh, just the normal mode. So then we have cine smooth mode. So if you want to get very, very cinematic videos, all that kind of stuff, then you're going to want to have cine smooth mode. It slows the drone down a lot and uh, um, and it just changes a lot of the stuff. Like the gimbal is really slow at going up and down to get those cinematic shots. Units. So you can choose metric, metric kilometers or imperial. So if you'd like to have it uh, kilometers per second, that it's moving or kilometers an hour and then meters per second. And then we have gimbal. So gimbal mode, you want on follow mode. So that just means if the drone is turning to the left, the gimbal will stay straight to keep you getting steady shots. Or FPV mode, it basically, if you turn the drone to the left, the gimbal will move left. So it gives kind of a first person view mode like the FPV drones. Then we have our advanced gimbal settings. So we can change our pitch speed so going up and down and rotation uh, and then pitch smoothness so you can change how smooth it is and then I'll allow upwards gimbal rotation if you don't want to know what that means it basically just means it the, if the gimbal's looking straight it allows you to actually tilt the gimbal upwards so you can look up if you wanted to if you're kind of low to the ground but you wanted to look up at let's say the sun or something or the moon and wanted to get a really cool shot like that you can do that
Next, we have gimbal calibration. So it's super simple. You just click auto while it's on a flat surface. I'm just going to go back. Um, and it just makes the gimbal work a lot better if you're having issues. So you can also click the blue button, recenter gimbal. So if it's looking down or it's looking up and it's in a weird position and you don't want to use the little uh, dial on the remote controller, you can just click that blue button and it'll go right back to normal. Uh, so stick mode, we click here. You can change between mode one, mode two, mode three, mode four. They're all different types of uh, like uh, how it goes up and down, like what sticks may control what parts of the drone. Uh, the drone comes with mode two, and that's what most drones use, but you can also change it or make it custom, which is nice. RC calibration, so you can plug in your remote controller and calibrate the sticks if they're acting weird, like if you push it forward and it's not behaving properly, like it's not, it's just acting kind of weird, you're going to want to do a remote control calibration. Flight tutorial, I will actually do a video on that in the future and I'll explain all of that. Well, there's not much to explain because it kind of just, it kind of just walks beginners through how to fly the drone. And that happens once in a while, just sometimes when you're flying, connect aircrafts, that's just, it usually you just click that and then your drone will connect. Camera, so photo, size, um, storage locations so you should have a micro sd card on the aircraft to get really good video if you want to get that 2.7k or in 4k on the mini 2 or the um, mavic uh, air 2 uh, and then advanced shooting settings so we got our histogram ex overexposure warnings so you got that like zebra type uh lining if if you're overexposed in certain areas you have your grid lines so this just kind of get and make sure that your photos are level and everything and like your drone isn't just like turned to the right or something. Your white balance, the drone is pretty good at uh, white balance already, but you can put it on manual and control that type of stuff. So obviously I can't do that right now. Anti-flicker, so that's not there because the drone's not connected, but uh, you can put it on auto or choose. Uh, video subtitles, so that's just if you're watching a tutorial video. You can easily uh, see it if you're hard of hearing. Uh, and then we have cache when recording. So as I said, cache before is basically just temporary files to uh, just make stuff work better. Uh, and then we have our transmission. So frequency. So you can't change that. That's just uh, uh, what your specific drone has. And then if you scroll down to advanced, most of the time it'll be on auto and it'll show you all the different frequencies that your drone can be at. And uh, it, auto isn't really the greatest at choosing the right channel, but if you put it on manual and, or if it's on auto and you noticed uh, transmission issues and it's dropping a lot, land the aircraft and then put it in manual and choose a bar that has a very low, uh, like if it's lower, that is the better. So if it's really high, it will be indicated red as unstable. Click about, uh, the name of your aircraft is there, the model, so I'll say Mavic Mini, Mavic Mini 2, or Mavic Air 2, aircraft firmware, so you can check for updates or see the current firmware. Remote controller firmware, you'll see that FlySafe database. Uh, if you don't know what FlySafe is, it's the uh, onboard system that stops your drone from coming into uh, air spaces such as an airport that are prohibited from flying in. Uh, so just check for updates for that. FlySafe gets updates pr a lot because there's obviously new airports or different protocols that are happening. So yeah, app version. So you can see your app version. Battery serial number, the current one that's in your device. You may have multiple, but that's just the current one. Uh, flight controller. So flight controller is an onboard system in the drone that controls the flight. Uh, the remote controller serial number and the camera serial number. So those all have different serial numbers. And if you're having an issue with a certain part, you're going to want to contact TJI and put that serial number. And yeah, guys, that is pretty much it for the Fly app. Uh, I will, when I'm actually flying the drone, I will do a bit more in-depth on certain things that I didn't really cover in this video because it's not really like I'll do different camera modes like video and photo. I'll show all that in a different video. And yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.